California-based developer, Way Forward, most known for the recent installments of the excellent Shantae franchise and various surprisingly solid license hits like The Mummy Demastered, have unleashed a new satirical mix of run and gun with tons of platforming to boot. Speaking of mixing, this game combines the quirky aesthetics and pompous presentation of the 80s 90s Saturday morning cartoons with a sort of parody of Jurassic Park's experiments with dinosaurs. This game has been available as an Apple Arcade exclusive for some time, but now it's finally hitting all other platforms, including the Xbox, so our time has now come to look into it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Spider Source. The game opens up with a series of hand-drawn action sequences with a dramatic voiceover first and then accompanied by epic music. It's intentionally made in the style of the aforementioned Saturday morning cartoon intros, with the influence of series like G.I. Joe and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that is very obvious. The first major setback for the game, though, comes immediately after. Spider Source allows us to select three different difficulty levels and whether we want to play it single player or in local two player co-op. And it crashed. I started up again, and it crashed again. After a lot of experiments, I eventually realized that a fresh boot after installing allows me to enter the game just fine, but if I exit the game, even once, I can no longer load up my save without a crash. The only solution is to reinstall the game every single time I want to play. Yes, you heard that correctly. I don't know if this happens with every console version, or if it's the result of some oddly specific combination of things on my side, but I can't recall another game with such a crash rate at the top of my head. So off to a pretty bad start. Fortunately, once I eventually crawled my way towards the tutorial, my impressions of the game improved a fair bit. While I can't get past the visual dissonance of the characters running animation looking faster than their actual movement, which makes it seem as if they're skating on ice, there is some solid 2D platforming here with jumps, ledge grabs, and of course the good old 8 directional shootings, which has several weapons, ranging from the classic assault rifles to grenade launchers and even electricity based armaments. All of this gels well with the enemies, which are genetically engineered dinosaurs by the way, whose cartoony yet menacing presentation gives these cannon fodders a lot more personality, and their creative visual design often tells you how an enemy behaves before we even see them on the move. As said, the game pits two unlikely protagonists against hordes of dinos, and the reason behind it is simple. A part-time rock star and a rookie cop are the two sole survivors of a deadly incident at Ingest, a clear parody of Jurassic Park's InGen, a company devoted to researching dinosaur DNA to make delicious dino DNA based potato chips. Seriously. But as it always happens, these mutated prehistoric beasts escape their lockers, wrecking havoc in the labs, and it's up to us to stop them from ever reaching the outside world. This happens via a series of linear missions that we can even replay at our leisure if we desire. But to be honest, barring the first couple levels where I did feel like going back to re-experience the thrills, the game progressed more and I lost interest in replaying anything. You see, the game works best when it just tries to be a laid-back, run-and-gun experience. A few dinos to take care at a time, each with only a handful of bullets to kill, with some basic platforming and some fast thinking required to get out of particularly nasty situations. After the first two or three levels, however, the game's flaws comes raining down on us. As more elaborate platforming sections arise, with moving parts and traps everywhere, the game's not particularly satisfying controls transpire a lot more. But more importantly, the game starts spamming enemies like there's no tomorrow, with each of them having large health bars, making them effectively bullet sponges that respawn no less. Couple this with an abundance of traps, knockbacks on a lot of the hits, and multiple other issues, and the game becomes a lot more frustrating rather than challenging. One of the main culprits is hard to notice in gameplay videos, but it's actually the camera. As players progress past a certain point, the camera no longer moves backwards, rendering the previously explored area a thing of the past. This is not a big issue in most horizontal parts, albeit enemies don't seem to necessarily despawn when out of bounds, which sometimes makes attacks appear effectively out of thin air. The grave issues arise in vertical platforming segments, where jumping towards the top of the screen often moves the platforms on the bottom impossible to reach. If the player lands out of bounds, they lose a whole life. Now combine this with the endless barrage of enemies, traps such as sticky spiderwebs, all kinds of knockback attacks, and not particularly great controls, and yeah, it should be pretty obvious that it can get frustrating. Boss battles also ended up being way more bullet spongy than they needed to be, with the players needing to perform the same dance sometimes up to 8 to 10 times to get rid of them. The game's main strength, aside from the Saturday morning cartoon style presentation, has to be the DNA mutations the players can achieve by defeating said bosses. Each of the bosses leave behind a tasty piece of meat, which is consumed in a mini cutscene that ends up giving the players some extra ability, like double jumps or a rope to instantly reach the top of the screen, infinite climbing on walls, and so on. This makes the gameplay more and more varied as the levels go on, with even a handful of unique sequences, such as one in the back of a raptor in an ever-moving stage. Creativity is not the thing lacking in spider Source, that has to be said. Humor is generally on point too, with well-voiced dialogues and exchanges between characters, 
It's too bad though that these interactions are otherwise rather static, almost always happening at the destroyed conference room that serves as a non-interactive hub for the mission selection. Now unfortunately, everything else is rather disappointing. The frequent crashes I encountered on Xbox Series X, the increasingly bullet spongy nature of enemies, a fairly unsatisfying platforming and with simple level designs relying on cheap tricks such as traps every few steps or endlessly responding enemies to keep the stakes high. They say that co-op makes every game better, but given the title's absolutely chaotic battles after a few levels, even the two-player local cooperative play found in Spider Source isn't enough to save the day. It's a short game that has some additional content to be played on higher difficulties, but I wouldn't recommend pushing through these formulaic levels more than once. There's a really cool presentation and some really funny ideas in here, but we expect far more from veterans like WayForward.